But doesn't code have to have a coder? No, of course it doesn't. Okay, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Just imagine the people back in the day when they would have to travel certain distances for months or even years. What is one thing that they would carry with them? The Quran. Why? Because they did not have it on their mobile devices or their gadgets. Brothers and sisters, imagine you have a app, the Qurani app, which not only shows you how much rewards you get, but reminds you to read the Quran, gives you reminders. Download the Qurani app now and let it testify for you on your Maqiyamah that you read it wherever you was. Asalaamu Alaikum, welcome to this reaction video. We're going to be watching Piers Morgan and Dawkins. It's going to be interesting. What do you think of this, Ali? I'm excited to see the cultural Christian atheist, uh, see what he has to bring. And, you know, is he going to defeat Piers Morgan? Because, you know, he's more senior, you know, in knowledge. The clash of titans. When scientists and philosophers reason from evidence, they typically use a method of reasoning that has a technical name. It's called inferring to the best explanation, where the best explanation is one that, where you're invoking a cause which has the kind of powers that would be required to explain the, the phenomenon of interest. Mm. And you correctly pointed out in your conversation with him that when you get back to that, what physicists mm. often call the singularity, mm. the point where matter, space, time, and energy begin to exist, the materialist is really up against a, a huge conundrum because prior to the origin of matter, there is no matter to do the causing. That's mm. what we mean by the origin mm. of matter, that that's where it starts. Right. And so if you want to invoke a cause which is sufficient to explain the origin of matter, you can't invoke matter. You see, Richard Dawkins, this is the, the, the nub of, I think, my whole issue with your position on this. And you can respond, obviously, to what you just heard in a moment. But, but when you go back to the very start, what is there before that? And that, I think I asked you last time, and Professor Meyer brought that up again as being the flaw in your position, which is... What is there before it starts? What is nothing? This is a question for a physicist, not a biologist, but what I would answer to Professor Meyer is that we need to explain complexity in terms of simplicity. And of course, it's true that I cannot say what was there before the Big Bang. OK, so he started off, and the first mm. thing that he said with respect, Professor Dawkins, is false. We have to explain complexity with simplicity. What's the evidence for that? They call it the Occam's razor, but how do we know that that is true? Hmm. If we look at something, right, say you are studying the atom. It yeah. looks pretty simple. You've got all these atoms that make up the world. Yeah. Yet, what did physicists discover at the beginning of the 20th century? They discovered quantum mechanics. Yeah. They discovered that actually, when you observe a particle, it acts differently to when you don't observe it. Young Slate experiment. So the world turned out to be far more complex than we thought. So this, yeah. this assumption that everything has to be broken down into simple terms, what's the evidence for that? There's none. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, he, he talks about like, um, what was the other guy's name? Stephen Meyer. Yeah, Stephen Meyer said, you know, it's like they're just pointing back to the first cell or whatever it is. That doesn't explain anything. You know, the, the, you're just pointing back to the matter. We're not talking about that. We're talking what created that cell, which is the question. But they keep saying, oh, yeah, the first cell was complex and it replicated itself. In order for it to replicate itself, it has to have design in the first place. You know, so, yeah. Absolutely. And why one cell? But also going back to naturalism and materialism, it can't explain matter itself yes. because it's, it's, it's insufficient. But I just wanted to add something else. Look, Richard Dawkins knows his stuff when it comes to biology. Obviously, mm. he does. But philosophy is a different thing. And Stephen Meyer comes from a philosophy of science background. Yeah. He has a PhD from Cambridge. And Michael Roos, who's a well-known atheist, he is somebody that said that reading Richard Dawkins' book, The God Delusion, made him embarrassed to be an atheist and also said yeah. about him that he would fail at an introductory class of philosophy. Yeah. So the problem here is not his science, yeah. but it's his overall thinking philosophy. He's been popularized. Physicists sometimes tell us that the word for before doesn't even mean anything before the Big Bang. But whatever it was, it's but, but got it to be simple. To, it? You cannot on suddenly invoke... Doesn't it have to? But I, I someone that. That, well, someone as logical as you are, and I, I believe you are, you know, you think about this all very logically. A logical mind surely has to appreciate that before the Big Bang, there has to have been something before then. Otherwise, what is nothing? Talk. A physicist will tell you that... Them, that yeah, but what do you, what do you tell, tell you? So when he says a physicist 
a physicist will tell you, who is he really referring to? He's referring to the likes of Lawrence Krauss. Mm. What happened to Lawrence Krauss? Yeah, he got a janazah. So the fact is, you know, he wrote a book, A Universe from Nothing, Nothing is Something. You guys can see the debate with Hamza Swartz says. Like, you, if you're going to talk about something as deep as the beginning of the universe, yeah. you have to speak about philosophy. You cannot just speak about physics mm. because that's a point at which Physics and philosophy becomes one. Mm. And, and, and they're so illogical. I mean, peers call them logical. They're not. I mean, these people use these terms and names, even like, you know, rationality rules. Your, irra your irra 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 irrationality rules. Because I don't understand logic, right? You guys are the absolute oxymoron, the opposite of that. And here, look, he demonstrates that when he asks a simple question, simply what was before that? I mean, it's, it's just common logic and he can't answer it. I am trying to tell you what a physicist would say first of all they would say that you cannot use the word before for the big bang time began at the big bang there was no before before the big bang i know it's contrary to common sense mm. physicists don't necessarily deal with common sense well it, it, it makes no sense does it and that's what i mean as if you're a logical <laughs> man that cannot make sense to you yeah, I... so let, let's go back to Imam Ghazali's argument, the Kalam cosmological argument, yeah. whatever begins to exist has a cause. Yes. The universe began to exist, therefore the universe has a cause. Yes. We are not invoking anything except basic simple logic. Yes. Now the problem with uh, Professor Dawkins, and this is for anybody that's read his book, The God Delusion, is he is weak in philosophy. He may be strong in biological science, but he's weak in philosophy, which is why when it comes to someone like Piers Morgan, who's a journalist, who's not a scientist himself or a physicist or a philosopher, he can corner him like this. And you can actually see through his body language and his demeanor that it's very difficult for him to speak about this topic. Exactly. And you know what's really profound? Imagine all of the people that left their faith, be it Christianity, well, I mean, just imagine them on the day of judgment and this clown is there with this illogical, irrational sense, whatever he has, yeah? And, I mean, just imagine the, the, the absolute, utter horror of listening to this fool, this clown that has no idea what he's talking about, cannot even explain the basic principle except that there was something before. I mean, just the utter devastation of losing th this life and the hereafter because of someone like him. Look at his face. I mean, a, co a cultural Christian atheist. The thing that we need to keep in mind is somebody may be very good at their field. They may be very good at zoology. They may be very good at explaining, say, the selfish gene idea, which is what Richard Dawkins is very good at. Mm. But then when it comes down to logical issues, we shouldn't think, oh, he has a monopoly on thinking because he's yeah. an Oxford professor. We should also ask those critical questions. But they don't because they are insecure. That's why they treat him like a prophet. Whatever he says, it's like, oh, we are blind faith. But doesn't code have to have a coder? No, of course it doesn't. Okay, <laughs> that, that doesn't make any sense. What is Piers Morgan basically doing? He's asking a basic question of inference, the same question which Maya is, uh, you know, speaking about in the previous interview. We are not talking about God of the gaps. We are using our minds and our past experience to deduct that if there is a imprint on design, there must be a designer. Mm. And if there's a code, there must be a, a coder. And you know, the other day when we were in Bosnia, we were, you know, me, you and uh, Zishan, we were talking about the genetic, uh, the, the DNA strand, yeah. how it can be read from left to right or yes. right to left, or it can read, 3D. be read 3D and the amount of information in it. And then one of the things that you were saying is that it has more information than all of the uh, books that you get in a library. Yeah. So all of that information we want to say, no, that's an accident. But here we are watching this video and we can see there's writing Piers Morgan, yes, Richard Dawkins. Yes, information requires intelligence. Or, exactly. Simple as that. And, but look at the confidence and the categorical way yeah. that he's speaking. No. Yeah. Not even a possibility of maybe. It's yeah, just yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. SubhanAllah. That's why this, the Prophet Sallam said, a speech is like sihr. SubhanAllah. You know, look at it. He's just demonstrating that. I mean... Let's, well, see, let's see what else he's saying. Okay. Uh, Koda arises... Um, spontaneously at the origin of life. Something very, very simple, probably. Okay, wait a minute. Again, this is an assumption. This is not proven. This, this, what's the evidence for this? So he gives the answer and then he says, probably. How do you know that? How do you know there's one cell, not yeah. 10 cells? Yeah, exactly. And, and information is something. Yes, it, 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 it's like I said before, the example that I gave is that if, if, if there is 
nothing. Yes, absolute nothingness. You cannot. It's irrelevant to time. Time is irrelevant to the equation because the thing and the um, the elements to make that thing is not there. So how could you be talking about probability? And you know, I'm not saying he said that like you know, give it enough time. But he's basically t- talking about by chance. How could it come? How could information arise from nothingness? It's an impossibility. All of our experience teaches us what it teaches us that if there is design, if there's information, if there's coding we make an inference. But when it comes to the coding that we find in the DNA, yeah. we are told to switch off yes. the logic button. We're told yes. to not be consistent and to say, actually, categorically, there's no design. Yeah. And this is the problem when you mix biology with philosophy, but you don't actually tell people that actually what I'm doing here is just my own personal belief. It's got nothing to do with the biological data because the biological data is there's coding. Any inferences that you make, any philosophical things that you say, such as, no, there's definitely no designer, yeah. there's a background assumption of naturalism, exactly. which is not being said here. Exactly. And this is in a nutshell, we'll end on this note, is that this is kufr. Kufr is basically, you are hiding the truth. You are basically, because of your ego, because you hate God, because you, I think, I don't know if he said he was molested when he was young as well, so I don't know if it was him, or whatever it is, you just hate God. And because of that, anything to do with God, the truth, you are hiding. They're basically, these individuals are the figureheads of hiding the truth. And there's absolute... Sadly, idiots, they're following them to hellfire. I mean, we don't need to repeat, he's repeating himself like a parrot. I think the matter is clear, brothers and sisters, inshallah, and the days of atheism is over. Absolutely. It is so over. Absolutely. I mean, but this is the last thing I've ever do on uh, someone like him. I mean, yeah. I would highly recommend for somebody that wants to know the truth, who's sincere, then what you should do is never yes. think to yourself, somebody yeah. has a monopoly on thinking. Yes, he's a exactly. professor. Yes, he's yeah. from Oxford. Yes, he's an intelligent person. He's a jahil. But he can be wrong. Yes. So we should be open and skeptical yes. and we should have the scientific mindset of thinking, mm-hmm. okay, maybe I need to look at somebody else's arguments as well. Exactly. Brothers and sisters, hope you enjoy that video, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.